Okay, this is now the tarot lesson number five. And I'd like to give you a suggestion on how to go about doing a reading for somebody else or how to go about starting a reading for you or just if you want to practice and, and get to know cards better. I may have done something like this before, but I can't remember. If I did, it was a long time ago. And the other thing is, Every time you do this, you can do it multiple, t you do it a thousand times and it's going to be different, slightly different each time. And what you do is you're going to explain what the tarot is and kind of how it works. And while you're talking or thinking, if you're talking, you would be explaining to the questioner or if you're doing it for yourself, you're just thinking or maybe you talk out loud. But you're also going to be listening to what you say because you're going to notice that you say things you didn't know that you knew or you're going to say things that are different from what you expected you were going to say or you're going to come up with a different explanation or see something different about a card you've seen multiple times before and I'll give you an example so we say to the person and the camera's up here. Um, normally, uh, there would be somebody sitting opposite you. So I'm going to arrange the cards this way. So you say to the person, in the tarot, there are four, four suits. Um, there's swords, which represent hardship, conflict, and strife, or whatever you might make of swords. There's batons, which represent energy, enterprise, and career, and business. And it's kind of a good suit. Um, we've also got cups, which represents love, emotions, home, family, that kind of thing. And the last card we've got, or the last suit, rather, is, um, if I can find one, uh, coins, which represents money, but more importantly, I think it represents values. So it gives you an idea of what you care about. So if you look, you'll see there's a picture in each card. So here we've got um, somebody on a horse celebrating. And so you look at the picture on the card and you use the picture and what's going on in it to answer the question. So somebody might say, am I going to get the job? And you get this card. Yes, you're going to. It looks good. You're on. You're you're in control. You're in charge and you've got supporters around you. Whereas am I going to get the job and you get the four of swords? This is somebody lying down and lying maybe asleep. So will you get it? Yeah, are you sure you really want it? Because it looks like the person in this picture is thinking and meditating and contemplating. So we get an idea from the picture of what's going on. Then we've got um, court cards, kings, queens, knights, and pages. And you go through the deck and you find um, uh, there's a knight of cups. And then we've got um, the Page of Pentacles, Kings, Queens, Knights and Pages. Maybe you would go through and find a king, a queen, a knight and a page and put them down. Um, but what am I looking for? A king, maybe. And um, if I can find... Oh, there's a King of Pentacles. Okay, so we've got... Um, I don't have a queen... Um, so, okay, it doesn't matter because you know what queens look like. Okay, so we've got kings, queens, knights, and pages. And maybe you explain that pages and knights represent younger people. So, or they can represent inexperience. So with the page of coins, you're not, you're just new to money, let's say. Or you, if you can, if you think of pentacles is representing values and what you care about you just you it's as if you've begun a new cycle or a new way of looking at things that you care about and so it's new and the same with knights are, are messengers and then kings and queens represent established people or people who are good at things or people who like to give orders or people who naturally expect to be obeyed 
So you think it because you you think about what does a king represent, and kings are in charge ideally, and they're they know what they're about, and they're good rulers, and they give good orders, and they give good instructions, and maybe at this point you see whereas if the king is upside down, it can represent somebody who who is out their depth, so they're in a high position, or they're in a position where they're expected to give good orders, but they don't either because they don't know how to or they just give bad orders and th th there's something about um is it I, I think it's murphy's law where people are always promoted one step or one level beyond what they're capable of so somebody who's a good manager gets to be the ceo and he was a really good manager but a terrible ceo that often happens where you're you're really good at what you're doing and then you get a promotion or you move into a the next step up and and it's sort of one step beyond you and that can be what's shown by the king or even a queen upside down then we have 22 major trumps they're called like the chariot the hierophant and these are cards with names and titles and maybe some people think that major trumps are more important than minor trumps because these ones here the the ace two three are minor trumps um, are they more important somehow if you if you pick three cards and they're all major trumps it's uh, it looks like it's an, it's what's shown in the spread is going to be important whereas if you get three minor trumps um, maybe it's not going to be quite as important although I say that but I don't know if I really mean it um, so we've got cards with titles and so I, normally I, I like to ask people to pick a number between 1 and 9 and tell me which one and then pick a number between 0 and 22 and tell me which one All right so let's say the person chose 4 and 12 okay so I would I would show them some major trumps but then I would say okay you picked a number four that happens to be the emperor and so the emperor so it's like you're telling you at the moment you want to do things in a big way you want an empire right you want to be in charge of a large organization maybe it's a business or maybe it's just you in charge of your life so you you want power or you you need power you need authority because the emperor's authoritative and so you want to be in a high position or well regarded by other people. So you've got ambition. But the second number you chose is 12 for the hanged man. And the hanged man you can see is somebody hanging upside down. And the hanged man can represent delay and suspension. So this can mean you put these two numbers together. It can mean that yes, you've got ambition and you can go places and do big things, but it's going to take you longer than you expect because this is delay or by all means have your ambition but instead of trying to proceed with it now stop for a moment and think things through represented by the hanged man and maybe make sure that you haven't assumed certain things that are not going to happen or you're depending on other people to provide stuff that they can't pr provide in some way the hanged man picking the number 12 as well as the number four is you kind of warning yourself to take it easy and maybe to slow down a bit and to look at things from a different angle because you look at the hanged man hanging upside down we look at the world and we look at it all the same way the hanged man looks at the world from a different angle from a different perspective and you to give it choosing the number 12 can be you telling you okay we know what we want to do the emperor but we need to look at it from a different angle and make sure that we're not just seeing what we want to see or that we're not biased in a way that is going to interfere with the situation further down the road so that's the kind of introduction you give to the questioner because now you've told them about different areas of life and different kinds of activities you've told them about court cards representing people although maybe the, the next time you do this you talk about how kings can represent people 
who are in control, but they can also represent situations about questions about who's in charge or who makes the final decision. Because a king can, can represent questions about authority or um, power and so on. And then you've got the major trumps as well, which represent different things. And again, you can you can talk about the hierophant, for instance, might show teaching and learning, where you've got the, the expert, some kind of expert, or somebody with qualifications above, and the two people down below studying, or paying attention to what they're being told by the, the controlling figure. So that can mean your boss, let's say, or if you live in a condo, you've got the person who's in charge of the condo, owners association whatever it happens to be or maybe this is within a family and that's the 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 mother or the father who makes the decisions and the other people have to they don't have to obey but you know they they know what they're talking about so with the hierophant pay attention to experts or people who know what they're about with the hierophant upside down experts will tell you what to do um, but maybe they're wrong. So don't just take things at face value or jump to conclusions. So that I think is how it's one good way to begin a reading. And so um, if you um, um, if you do that more than once, then each time you do it, you're going to say something slightly different and you're going to if you listen to yourself, you're going to find find that you're explaining things differently, or you're explaining you're noticing something you didn't notice before. And I think what you do is you write it all down in your notebook, and then move on to the next step, or put the cards away. And um, I like to give a little shuffle at the end, not anything big, but something like that, just a sort of put a full stop at the end of the sentence and then that's it okay that was number five so I'll be back with number six ideally in three days so today's Sunday so Wednesday okay thanks a lot for watching and uh, bye bye for now